This is Keys to the Shop, episode 421, an encore episode of Simple Powerful Hospitality with Philip Turner. Well, hey, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Keys to the Shop, where we give you insights, inspiration, and the tools you need to grow as a coffee service professional. My name is Chris DeFirio. I'm your host for the show and uh, thrilled to have you along. Been a great journey so far here, six and a half years. 2.5 2.5 million downloads across the world of coffee and, you know, really just having a great time talking about coffee shops, how they work, how we can work in them well, and uh, all that fun stuff. So it's it's been great. So thank you all of you who have subscribed to the show, shared episodes, and uh, you really should hit subscribe to subscribe to the show. I mean, it's really simple to do. It helps the show out a lot, helps you out in that you can always stay updated with new content and just kind of sharing the resource of keys to the shop with somebody who you think might need a voice to help guide them through the journey of running a coffee shop or working as a manager or a trainer as a professional in a retail setting. It's a crazy world out there. And having a lot of voices in one place to really help make sense of this is really helpful. And and hopefully that's what keys to the shop is for a lot of you. So Thank you. And one of the things I love about coffee shops is community. And the coffee community itself has always been this really encouraging experience. For me, you know, whether it's a latte art community or whether that's through online groups or latte art community, et cetera, or, you know, in recent years, as I've done Keys to the Shop Consulting, doing coaching with teams and owners, the conversations really are edifying illuminating, encouraging, providing accountability. And one of the things I'm excited about offering now, starting in September and going on from there, is Keyholder Coaching Groups. The Keyholder Coaching Group is a new offering from Keys to the Shop Consulting to allow for small groups of coffee shop owners to gather together to help encourage one another through insights, inspiration, and accountability to continue and their journey to grow and refine their businesses and get more joy in the process of of owning and running a coffee shop. I will be hosting each group and the inaugural group is going to be launching in September. We meet twice a month for two hours each time and each person gets one-on-one time with the group to really focus in on their specific problems. We get lots of opportunity for conversation and it runs for six months. And so At the end of this, you're going to get to know each other really well. You're going to start to see the opportunities and the challenges and the life of the business that you've shared with the group change and grow in positive directions. I personally have been involved in a a mastermind group and have hired coaches and been part of groups that have done these things and have seen the fruit from it. So I'm excited to offer this through Keys to the Shop Consulting. The the Keyholder Coaching Group applications are open now. Just email me, chris at keystotheshop.com to learn more, and I will send you the link to sign up and be considered for this first group of five launching in September. So thanks very much. And you know, the idea of running a coffee bar is really daunting. And one of the things that makes it less daunting is knowing that you can count on certain things in the cafe to always do a great job. And when you get the right equipment, that's a comfort rather than a worry. And that is why I love the Grounds Control Cyclops Brewer from Voga Coffee. It's a comfort to know that this award-winning technology has been adopted by some of the world's best coffee bars to provide them with next-level batch brewing, unlike anything you've ever seen before. SCA award-winning technology means that it allows you to access a depth and range of flavor that is unprecedented, delivering customers coffee quality like no other. And not only is it a great batch brewer, but it also makes tea, batch diced lattes, batch cold brew. So the opportunity to expand into other lines of beverages and create efficiencies and profitability is also there. So check them out at groundcontrol.coffee to learn more. It is truly a revolutionary piece of equipment that I think you really need to look at if you want quality, if you want efficiency and avenues of profitability in your cafe. Check them out again over at groundcontrol.coffee. You know, it seems pretty simple when you think about the idea of what we do. We pour liquid in cups and then we do that again. And we do it a few hundred more times and then we go home. 
so obviously we're a little reductive there, but the point is, is that the liquid that we do pour, the coffee, the milk, and the plant-based beverages all have to be top-notch. All eyes and all palates are on that. When it comes to plant-based beverages, one of the best choices that you can make for that all-important drink is using the Barista Series from Pacific. That's the line of plant-based performance beverages that is created for baristas and approved by baristas all over the world, and it performs so well on bar, stands up to the heat from steaming, produces unmatched silky texture, and creates flavor balance in the cup that delivers a perfect experience every time. Go to pacificfoodservice.com to learn more, get samples for yourself. I think you really will be impressed. And again, if you're looking for the best plant-based beverages to serve your customers, I think it has to be the Barista Series from Pacific. Okay, everybody. Well, today I wanted to share with you, I think it's episode 45 of Keys to the Shop. You know, in terms of numbers of episodes, I think we're at 753 or something like that of published episodes. If you look, and this is in the early years of Keys to the Shop, one is within the first year or so. And what I was able to do was sit down with, at the time I was working at a place called Center Goss Coffee as an operations manager. And one of my managers that I was leading at the time was named Philip Turner. And he ran the Fifth Street store here in Louisville. And, you know, when you look back at your life, you have certain people that really stand out to you. Philip is one of these people for all the right reasons, congeniality, gregarious, lovely, encouraging, just genuine and heartfelt in such a way that makes you inspired. Like, what am I doing with my life? <laughs> why, why, why? I have to aspire to some higher level here. And I feel great when I'm in his presence. And that was what Philip spread to everybody in the cafe, whether they were a customer or a coworker, and so I was able to sit down with Philip in the cafe when it was closed and was able to interview him about his approach to hospitality. And from this, we get one of the most used phrases in my own coaching now, which is to talk to people about their hospitality, focusing on making people feel acknowledged, welcomed, and included. And this is what the whole conversation was about, it's about how he perceives hospitality, how he breaks it down, and what those things mean in the cafe. And that's why the title is Simple, Powerful Hospitality. We don't necessarily need to overthink it. We just need to embrace it and allow people to feel embraced by our hospitality. And Philip was such a great example of that. And so I wanted to bring this back up into your inbox, <laughs> so to speak, and to your attention so that you can chew on this and consider how you can employ simple, powerful hospitality in your cafe today. So without anything else, let's get right to this episode. Here now is my conversation from way back in the day, I think it was like 2017 or so, about hospitality with Philip Turner. All right, so Philip Paul Turner, welcome <laughs> to Keys to the Shop. Thank you, glad to be here, Chris. Yeah, I'm glad you're here too. So we're here in the store at Fifth Street, Center Goss Coffee in Louisville, where you manage. We're here to talk about your amazing service and <laughs> hospitality. Yeah. Don't, <laughs> don't you think you have amazing service and hospitality? Well, I strive for that. <laughs> yeah, we all do. And and that's one of the reasons I've, I've wanted to have you on the show for a long time is because I get to see it firsthand. And anyone who comes into Fifth Street will get to experience it firsthand. And so anyone in the audience, I think, hearing this episode today is going to benefit from what you have to share and where your philosophy okay. comes from. So, you know, before we get into that, though, you've been in coffee now for about 11 years. How did you end up getting started in coffee and arriving here to, to this place now at Center Goss? I started in coffee down in Florida in 2007, and I just needed a job. I hadn't really even been a big coffee fan before that, but just needed a job. You know, you got one at Starbucks. It was very attractive to me. I was very love being around people, you know, it's a very good environment for being around people. Worked there for about four and a half years. I started in Florida, then moved up to Nashville. Like they, they transfer people. They have a good program for, for transferring and transferred from Florida to the Nashville area where I worked at a few different shops around Nashville for a few years and learned a lot about, you know, customer service. Customer service is 
definitely a focus of, of Starbucks. So that was a part of it. Another part of it was learning the hard way through saying the wrong thing or doing the wrong thing. And, you know, Starbucks is a very comfortable place for so many people that it feels like if something goes wrong, it's that much more worse. Learned a lot about customer service at Starbucks. Worked with fantastic people. Worked there for a few years and then worked at Frothy Monkey in Nashville, which was a blast. Again, worked with just the best people and served wonderful people. That shop is very busy. They have a great product, uh, certainly. And the people that work there are wonderful. And it's lined to the door all the time, it, it, you know, it feels like. So I really had to try to learn how to offer as much as I could in such a short amount of time. Mm. Uh, so I kind of learned a bit about that and then more about, you know, saying the wrong thing or doing the wrong thing, you know, probably for the rest of my life. But was that, was that always a bent that you had was in the situations where you were to try to figure out the best way to deliver that kind of hospitality and service? I guess so. You know, it's funny. I haven't really thought a lot about this. A, a lot of it is, it is intuitive, but I find that to be true. You know, if I have an experience that is undesirable because I said the wrong thing, you know, I should probably you know change a part about that. So Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean it's not always the most common thing for somebody to immediately think, well, I should change. Oftentimes, okay. I, I feel like baristas or maybe just service in general, we think about, you know, why did they react to that thing right. I said? Right. Um, they're just a jerk. Yeah. And it wasn't your intention. Like, yeah, many things that went down were not my intention. Mm. Something went wrong in translation. It's an intuitive thing that you mm, have I to so. have a disposition of how can I change to better accommodate mm -hmm. this person? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you went from uh, Frothy Monkey mm -hmm. and then and then how do you end up here? You know, I went through a, a big life transition and moved here for family. You know, of course, was in coffee at that point for about seven years. So it was very comfortable. My, my brother at the time worked here. And I, I loved the coffee. When I was in Nashville, when I came to Louisville, I would have to get some Sunnergoss coffee and, and a Nord's donut, right. of course. That's the uh, thing you do. Yeah. So I was already familiar with the product, familiar with several of the people. I was fortunate enough to get hired very graciously and learned a lot. And it's been a, a wonderful ride so far nice. here at Sunnergoss. Yeah. Yeah, well, we absolutely love having you. I get to experience the uh, service and hospitality that you bring to the table. It's one of the main reasons why your manager here at this store, I think you said something really important earlier, which was how you could try to pack as much value in hospitality into a small period of time. And, you know, we're sitting in a store right now where there are no seats except for we just got like yeah. <laughs> patio tables for the first time in, in six years to put out. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> but the interactions here, when you get six people inside this space, it's really crammed. Mm -hmm. uh, what right. is this, like 300 square feet? Maybe. Yeah, yeah I, I don't know. It's got, it's really small. It's probably smaller than what you're imagining right now if you're listening. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's pretty tight. But the experience that people have here is one that they always rave about in, in your philosophy on service and hospitality is, is part of that. So I'm excited to get to have the keys to the shop audience familiar with your mantra. And in, if you've listened to or if you've read the notes of the show, you've probably already seen what the mantra is. But one thing that Philip always says is that you are to make the guest feel acknowledged, welcomed, and included. So those three things come up a lot. And it's one of those mantras that it just it obviously doesn't come out of nowhere. But I mean, how did you come up with, for you, this just three-step process of making sure that you're, you're just covering all your bases. Right. Well, a lot of the thought behind it is just a result of something that happened organically here in the shop where some people would come in, order coffee, hang around for a minute and drink it. And there would be conversation that came from that. And so I, I envisioned an ideal customer interaction. And in my head, it looked like someone walking in, some sort of acknowledgement of them being there, very important. And then at some point, a welcoming, them knowing that they were welcome there, and then, you know, a possible opportunity to be included in a conversation or a moment or whatever. And just that vision kind of became acknowledge, welcome, include. I feel like that came from some manager or store meeting that you had, and it was shared there, and maybe where I first heard you say that. Right. It was a, it was a store meeting. Yeah. 
I'm of the opinion that, I mean, there are lots of ways that we can be hospitable. And there are whole books, 200, 300 more pages written on the subject of hospitality. And what I love about this is, is that it's so simple, but it covers all the bases for any visit in any type of store. But it gives flexibility, too, because mm -hmm. this isn't something just for a small store, is it? Right. No, no, that's important. It is kind of vague. There's a lot that you could take from that. So being vague, I think, is, is really good here because if you base your hospitality on something that's very rigid, it, it really kind of falls into that area of prescriptive approaches where you're doing service like Danny Meyer says you don't want to do, which is doing you know service to somebody. Right, right. <laughs> rather than not for them. Not for them, right. right. We yes. all read the book. Yep. Yeah. Fantastic book, yes. It is. Let's dive into these three things. First, you want to acknowledge mm -hmm. that somebody is there. Mm -hmm. And it's one of those, like here, if you're working the espresso machine in one of our stores, you have what we call the first hello. Mm -hmm. uh, that's an acknowledgement. It goes beyond that, though, because things are busy. Like, right. what does it look like for you, ideally, for somebody to have been acknowledged successfully? Yeah, and, and I really do think that this could look different every single time it happens. I think just depending on the circumstance, because sometimes you're mid conversation with a customer, which is desirable, and you want to acknowledge someone that comes in, it can just be just a raise of the eyebrows, eye contact, raise the eyebrows in a, in a, a smiley face. I think people just on some level, you know, most of us anyways, want to be acknowledged. And it doesn't take much. I think it's a very simple thing. Eye contact and it, it can be a hello for sure. But sometimes that's not practical. And so that's where welcoming would be different. And, and, and that's something that everybody shares a responsibility to do, mm -hmm. even though in our workflow, it, it talks about having the responsibility. So one of the problems I see is that baristas will either consciously or subconsciously try to find a way to get out of talking with customers, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So one of the ways that I think this can fall apart for people is there's this predisposition that baristas have, I think, and anyone in service that's task oriented to try to kind of wiggle out of acknowledging people. <laughs> like maybe it's the person next to them's job. Okay, uh, right. Do you see that sometimes? Well, you know, fortunately not here so much. Oh, good. <laughs> but I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. And we are on the receiving end of that sometimes where mm -hmm. you can tell that somebody sees you they see you, but they don't acknowledge you in the way that you're saying. It's not enough to just know that somebody looked at you. They have to look at you, it sounds like, in a benevolent sort of, I'm glad to see you yeah. sort of way. Yeah. It's hard to teach someone. It kind of has to be there. Otherwise, it wouldn't feel awesome you know, for the customer. But just to, sometimes just eye contact is all it takes. Just a, like, well, positive eye contact. Well, so what happens if a customer is not acknowledged? I think for a lot of people, it's fine. But I think that a lot of people have an expectation and expectations are huge here. I think a lot of people, when they go to a place to receive anything, acknowledgement is huge. And if they have an expectation for it to be there and it's not, it's immediate disappointment, even on a small level, still matters. So you're kind of setting yourself up to disappoint right from the beginning. Yeah, you have to make up for ground already. So somebody comes in the cafe, a staff member is going to acknowledge them, mm -hmm. give them a smile, mm -hmm. raise of the eyebrow. Mm -hmm. We're not winking at people. Right. Well, you know, it, it depends. depends on the person. <laughs> if we know them. <laughs> right. <laughs> so it, that could go one way or it could go another. Yeah. yeah. But it's important that they're, they're brought in with their dignity affirmed. Mm -hmm. And, yep. you know, they're, yep. oftentimes it seems like people are beat up when they come into a cafe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe they've had to find a parking space and they couldn't right. and it was just one more thing. Yep. That day was already really bad. Yep. We sit across from a courthouse downtown mm -hmm. here at Fifth Street and man, there's a lot of tension that walks in that door. Yeah, that's right. A lot of people needing a lawyer or just seeing a lawyer or they are a lawyer or they work in the courts, you know, there's a lot that goes on, a lot of tension, like you said. And a lot of people are numbers. I mean, it's not just downtown or for people who wear you know, suits. It's just in our South End store as well. People are used to being looked over a lot of times in life. And as we become mm -hmm. less social face to face, we mm -hmm. become easier to ignore. So, mm -hmm. you know, I love the idea that acknowledgement, it can be so powerful, mm -hmm. but it's so, it's so simple. That's right. All right. So we've acknowledged people. They've, they're in the store. We're doing good. 
Now it's time to welcome them. What is the difference between welcoming somebody and acknowledging them? Because we can easily think of our acknowledgement as a welcome and Mm -hmm. just kind of, that's it, I'm done. Yep, and I think sometimes it can be, but I think many times the acknowledgement is more immediate. Basically, right when somebody walks in the door. And a welcoming can certainly happen then, but many times going the extra mile to make someone feel welcome and, you know, quick, very quickly assessing where they're at and how to communicate with them, as a lot of us do intuitively, that happens a little bit later at the register or maybe even at the bar, depending if they have to order first mm-hmm. before being rung up, you know. Yeah. Welcoming is a little bit deeper, I feel like, a, a little bit more. So you're rolling out the red carpet a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, because you're you're now interacting with them. So does the process of talking with them sort of give you more information that you can use to make them feel more welcome? Yeah, yeah. And a lot of that I feel like happens intuitively. So there is a difference between acknowledgement and welcoming. Welcoming seems to be something that you engage in that's a little bit more involved. It's more deep in custom to the person. Right. Can you explain a little bit more about, you know, practically speaking, how would you guide a barista who's listening right now? If they were your barista, here's how you welcome somebody. Right. Well, I would simply say, you know, take whatever opportunity you can as someone enters a shop to make them feel welcome. That certainly wouldn't come without acknowledgement, of course. Right. By welcoming someone, you would acknowledge them. But not always do we acknowledge someone and have the opportunity to make them feel welcome. It usually takes a little bit more. Sometimes that happens at the register where you're talking with someone, but that just can't always happen when somebody walks in. And some shops are much bigger than this. And all you can do is like, you know how you kind of wave with your head sometimes because yeah. your hands are steaming milk and pulling shots and you're talking to a customer. You have to give a customer something when they walk in. So you, you give them a, a smile or, a, you know, some kind of acknowledgement, welcoming them takes a little bit more, not much, but you, it many times happens at the register. Yeah. So the person at the register really has to take on the mantle of host a, a, lot, of in, times. a lot of times. Yep, yep. And that's strange. You know, in, in coffee shops, we tend to put the person with the least amount of experience on the register. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's true. Where that might be the most critical position. Yeah. And not that you can't do that. Right. But maybe training on hospitality is one of the first things. Yeah. 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 Because I certainly have done this myself. I'm sure you have Mm -hmm. too, where the register interaction is totally awkward. (laughs) Um, And it happens. It (laughs) it happens. And it does set a tone for (laughs) the (laughs) expectation for the rest of the time. It doesn't have to be smooth. But if it's genuine. Yeah, right. I guess it takes a certain personality too. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you're right about that. But if if something is a little off but honest and genuine, it's easier to cover that ground because there's a little bit of trust there. And if if I get off on the wrong foot, it's obvious that it's not intentional. It really is easy to make up ground just by just being nice. Mm -hmm. I mean... I would much prefer, and maybe... This is, I don't think it's controversial to say, I would i would prefer somebody be genuine, loving, welcoming, mm-hmm. and awkward yeah. than polished, robotic. Mm-hmm. And I know I'm creating straw men right now out of this. Like, I know that there's a point in between. <laughs> you can be more refined. <laughs> right. You don't have to be awkward. But there's something nice and refreshing about honest service in being welcomed into in a very real way. Right. I think it's, I don't know, I don't think it's overly simplistic to say be yourself, but I think that is a wonderful way to behave at a, at a bar, at a place where you're serving people a drink of any sort. I think being yourself is good. But of course, as long as it's being hospitable, if, if you are not a hospitable person, maybe work on that and then be yourself. Yeah. Later. yeah. Don't be yourself right away if right. that's not you. Right. <laughs> right. So now we've had an acknowledgement. They are noticed. They feel welcomed. Like that acknowledgement wasn't just a perfunctory, you know, check mark on the checklist. They know that you mean it now and they've experienced it Mm -hmm. awkward or otherwise. Right. right. right? And now the hard part comes because, you know, I think this is where we drop the ball a lot. And I don't say we like center goss, and I'm sure that that exists as well here, but we kind of abandon people after the order is Mm -hmm, placed mm -hmm. and that's kind of the thing that included seeks right. to solve, right. acknowledged, welcomed. And now 
they're included. So now we're responsible for them for the entirety of their, their visit. So what does included look like to you? Well, I think, and again, it, it really does vary from, from person to person, but I think there are many people who don't want to be included, and then usually they make that clear. You know, we don't need to include people in things as a rule that don't want to experience that at a shop, and, and that is great. But what happens a lot here is people get a drink for here and they hang out, and it's important that we don't continue our personal conversation over there while they're sipping their drink very close in mm. very close proximity to us. Like this shop is very small, but even still, no matter where your shop is and no matter how big it is, if a customer is having their beverage in your proximity, it's important, I think, to maybe include them and mm. let them be a part of something because that, like, that's the assumption in th- this acknowledge, welcome, include thing. The assumption is that there is a progression of relationship in the situation. The, we go from showing up to feeling, which is welcome. I feel like a lot of being welcome is on one person's part, a feeling. And so we progress from there to being included into something bigger, which is one of my favorite things about the coffee world is that it's it's about sharing, I think. So including them into whatever we got going on, I think is a magical thing. And it can be it can vary from person to person. But, you know, sometimes it means like offering them up part of the story that was already told and letting them be a part of it. I find it works here a lot. They're actually interested in stuff. And so including them is, uh, I have found an enhancing part of what we do here. So including them in the conversations that might be happening between staff members right. too. Sometimes, um, yeah. the, those, those private conversations that happen, you know, where the heads never really turn in the direction of the pickup bar. Right. Those are really painful to watch. Right. And that's a that's an interesting thing to do is to sort of rope people in to the conversation as you kind of sense that they are willing to be roped in, obviously. Right. Oh, <laughs> yes. Obviously, this is about the customer. It's yeah. always customer-focused about what they want, but many times it's clear by the way they're standing and where they are that they are willing to be a part of something. And, and it's not simply about your conversations, though. It's it's also making it about them, too, isn't it? Yep, yep. So how does that work out? Like, it's not that you're just saying, hey, why don't you talk about what we're talking about, <laughs> Nick? You know? How, yeah. how, do we, how do we make it so that we are taking our cues for how to make people feel included by making them the pilot of of their experience. Yes, I think a lot of that has to do with relinquishing them of responsibility to meet our expectations. When I tell a joke to a customer that I was telling to my, my coworker, I don't need them to respond a certain way for it to go, okay, I'm just offering them something, just like our coffee, we offer it. What they do with it is up to them. I'm not going to get upset if they don't like the joke. You know, I'm, I'm not... Funny, you know, I I tell dad jokes a lot. They're only funny because I'm laughing at myself. But what a customer does with what we invite them into is really up to them. We just offer it. We just offer an experience. So at what point do you switch or know that you need to switch between offering them something and then kind of asking them things? So, you know, we don't have expectations of customers necessarily, but sometimes we want to ask them. We do ask them, you know, how was your day going or different things that offer them an opportunity to steer the conversation. Yeah, I think the hard part about that to answer right now is that it is, again, individualistic. And so much of what we do here is a is a part of a relationship that's built over time mm-hmm. by them eventually having trust to share things with us after we've just kind of brought them into funny stuff. They eventually have trust to share things with us and asking them how their, how their day is going varies from day to day based on what we know they're going through. Right. And this is stuff that all people that work in cafes for a while understand is that when you have relationships with customers, you understand more about what they're going through sometimes and you cater what you say to them based on what you know. And so it really does vary from, mm-hmm. from you know customer to customer on that. So included is not simply included in our conversation. It's kind of included in this space and all of the different meanings that the space takes on throughout the day. Yeah, totally. So it could mean something different on Tuesday than it means on Thursday. Yeah, absolutely. Because a customer does create the culture in some ways. They're very much a part of it. You know, Mm -hmm. customers will sometimes come in and not buy coffee and they'll hang out and we'll, we'll talk about stuff. 
and you know there's a lot that's understood here about you know what's you know being polite to others and knowing who's around you there's a lot of that mm-hmm. but it's very much you know customers are a part of what we do here it's not just us you know they're co-creators yeah. of this experience yeah which i think takes a lot of the pressure off of us we do wear responsibility to sometimes steer things away from getting to certain topics or speaking in a certain way, you know, you know, gauging who's around and all that. And we have to be responsible here, but we also find it important to help customers be a part of what we do while also like maintaining a, you know, responsibility. But it, I think it takes some pressure off of us as well, letting customers be a part of it. So acknowledging, welcoming, and including people in the space is a simple three-part framework that anybody can use and adjust to their particular need, but it takes prioritization. Like you, you would have to come into the cafe recognizing that this is the overarching, you know, mission for your hospitality today. So what would you say to people? What's some advice that you would give to people who are trying to dial in their service according to these three steps? Yeah, I think a lot of it is while it's important that we be ourselves and in our growth understand what that means and while we need to keep ourselves in check, we also need to, I think, make sure it's about the customer. Like the acknowledge, welcome, include is things that like those are things we are doing, but it's not about us. It's it is about the customer. And I think that's easy to forget, but important to remember that it is a customer focused and you know, use whatever words you want, ultimately. But as long as you're finding ways to serve the customer as they are needed, I think things are going to organically grow and, and, you know, in a way that's going to serve them. So I've noticed a lot of obstacles in acknowledging, welcoming, and including customers, including expectations that we all show up with on our part, including how customers are expected to behave and any number of socially learned expectations that we've kind of picked up. There's customers that are, you know, unresponsive, or, you know, show up on the phone or having a conversation with someone with them. But what has helped me is simply offering and wanting to serve them without expecting them to respond the way I want. Right. Um, right. I found that important for me and being accepting of how people choose to be reasonably, which does take a lot of the pressure off ourselves to not be so affected by how people respond. Just Mm. acknowledging them as we see fit and welcoming them, you know, based on what would serve them best, you know, that particular person best and including them on their level, not how would serve us best. I think that is easy for me to forget, but important still. Acknowledged, welcomed, and included. Pretty simple. It is a good starting place if you're just getting into being a barista and you're wondering how you can show hospitality to people. I feel like this is a great place to start. And even if you're a veteran of the industry, I feel like this is a good reminder. It's like learning scales for a musician. These are things that speak to the human condition. We all want those three things. Yeah. And a cafe as a public space among all these other needy people, if, if, <laughs> right? right? right. We're, we right. all need, we need more than coffee. Yeah. We're yep. here not just for the coffee. Coffee for people. Yeah. yeah that's right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. This is a great tool for us to use. And, and I'm really grateful that we got to chat about this. Yeah, me too. Because I, I feel like this brings a huge amount of value. I mean, it's simple, but it's powerful. So any last words? Thanks for having me on. It's, it's been an honor and a pleasure, Chris. Okay, everybody. Well, I really hope that you enjoyed that. And just like I said, it is not something that's complex. It just is a matter of determination and having the will to execute on your better angels and to give people the thing that you know people need and want and that you would want if, you, if they were in your position. The acknowledgement, the feeling of welcome, to be included is just a deep human desire and need, I would say. Because we want the people who come to our places to feel something. We say, our mission statement is this. Our values are that. We want people to feel X, Y, and Z. Leave our cafe better than when when they arrived. But it doesn't happen unless we do something between the time they walk in and the time they walk out. And doing what Philip has demonstrated, Philip is no longer working in coffee, but his legacy lives on. This is the kind of thing that makes a ton of sense 
and creates a lot of impact and, and change. So my thanks again to my friend, Philip Turner, wherever you are. Love you, buddy. And I'm glad that we had the opportunity to chat. And so if you have any questions, comments, or feedback about today's conversation and the topic, feel free to reach out. Chris at keys to the shop.com is where you can do that. And if you wanted to reach out in person and shake my hand, you could do so over at Coffee Fest because I go to Coffee Fest every year, all the shows, helping them produce the Latte Art competitions and also lecturing you know, about culture and hiring and caring for employees and talk about uh, systems and that kind of fun stuff. It's just a really good time. 30 years. That's how long Coffee Fest has been doing this. A hub for resourcing with lectures, trainings, and workshops. They have the Latte Art competition. They've got the trade show floor with all the amazing vendors to help outfit you with the best services and stuff. And so it is just a great community too. So you get to be just infused with goodness uh, through Coffee Fest. Go to coffeefest.com, get signed up today. General admission is 50% off when you use the code KEYS. So sign yourself and your team up today. I do hope to see you at the show. And if you're going to Anaheim, which is coming up, or Orlando, which is the last show this year, either way, do say hello. Check them out again over at coffeefest.com. And with that, that is the end of our show, everybody. Thank you so much again for taking the time to join me. Don't forget to subscribe to the show. Share these episodes with your friends, your neighbors, your family, and with the very next person that you see after uh, stopping this podcast. And as always, I hope that this episode has truly given you keys to the shop.